Welcome to this gathering. Welcome to this community of humans from all ages and stages of life. We are committed to be with each other as we face the great questions of how to live a life of meaning, how to love inclusively, how to grow in body, mind, and spirit, and how to do our part to create a more whole, more just world. Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm the Reverend Jennifer Innes. It is my great joy to be the minister with this congregation. I want to welcome you. It is so good to be together. Our welcome for worship includes recognizing our history and broader context. This area where the church building exists is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They were here long before any of us. This congregation also sustains and supports itself largely on the gifts of time, talent, and treasure of its members and friends. Regular financial donations sustain the mission and the ministry of the congregation in all the ways that we gather, online and in person. The link to make a donation is in the chat. It will also be in the slide at the end of the service. Thank you for your generous gifts. And if you are a guest or a visitor, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, please help us get to know you. Uh, all are invited to our coffee hour after the Sunday service. Uh, the link for the separate Zoom meeting is in the chat and will be at the slide at the end of the service as well. Contact us through the website for more information. And now we have two special announcements, one from Joyce Rosenberger and one from Emily Smezrud and family. Good morning. My name is Joyce Rosenberger. We need your help. Our church community is fortunate to have so many volunteers. Countless hours of work are contributed to the church by volunteers, and we want to honor them. This past year, because we have not been able to be physically in our church building and meeting face to face, our volunteers may have been less visible Nevertheless, much has been accomplished by the work of our dedicated volunteers. The Recognition Committee needs you to submit nominations for the following Volunteer Recognition Awards. The Church Mouse is awarded to friends or members who work tirelessly behind the scenes, quietly contributing to the well-being of the Church. The Above and Beyond Award is to acknowledge members or friends whose leadership for a one-time or ongoing volunteer service goes beyond the regular service expectations of the church. The Outstanding Service Award is given in memory of Jack Fodd. Nominees for the Outstanding Service Award must be a church member with a history for volunteerism within or on behalf of the church for at least five years. Other factors to be considered for nominees for this award are the nominee's ability to facilitate volunteer service of others, the nominee's volunteer services in the larger community, and the nominee's adherence to UU principles in daily living. Nominations are due no later than May 31st, Memorial Day. Forms for nominations are attached to the flock notes sent recently, or you may email me at jmrosenberger46 at gmail.com with the name of the nominee, the award you are recommending, and the reasons for the person or group receiving this award. Thank you very much for nominating a volunteer. Hi, I'm Emily Smezrud, and this is my son, William. And we are half of the Smezrud family here at UU of Peoria. Uh, we came to the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria after hearing about it from friends who have similar values and views of the world. Views of loving generously and without judgment and of accepting people for who they are and working to make our world a better place for everyone mm -hmm. to live in. <laughs> Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We wanted a community for our family to grow up in and have found that in this congregation. I remember the first service we came to in 2018 when William was just a baby. The sermon gave me goosebumps on my arms and I knew that we had come to the right place. 
The children's religious education program has engaging and fun events that the kids mm -hmm. really, really look forward to and help provide a great framework for us to teach our kids what is truly important to us. Mm -hmm. At times, as we all do, I'm sure, I can feel overwhelmed by parenthood, by expectations, by the events of the world. One thing I can rely on is this community. The UU community accepts me as I am. Right now, that's the tired mom who just needs a little peace and quiet, a moment of peace and reflection during service. I know that whatever I am able to give is appreciated, even if during this season of life, it's not as much as I wish it could be. One way that we can help give this community uh, what it needs to be available to everyone uh, for a moment of peace is by pledging to give during the annual campaign fund. That was Nora. So we, we pledge to give every year because we want to, co to continue to provide a place for families just like ours to grow up in the community um, that teaches the values that we appreciate. So don't forget to pledge for the annual campaign fund. Thank you, Joyce, and thank you, Emily. Now, let us enter into worship with our opening song, Soon the Day Will Arrive, with Leah Morris and Cantor Jason Kaufman. O tire, o tire, kama toriye, bashana, bashana haba. O tire, o tire, kama toriye, bashana, bashana haba. Soon the day will arrive when we will be together and no longer. Without wondering whether on that day thunder clouds will appear. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care, you and me. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care. Some have dreamed, some have died To make a bright tomorrow And their vision remains in our hearts Now the torch must be passed With new hope and not new sorrow And the promise to make a new start Wait and see, wait and see What a world there can be If we share We travel this road together from Reverend Tess Baumberger. From the busyness of every day, we gather once a week to remember who we are, to dream of who we might become. We travel this road together. As companions on this journey, we share the milestones we meet along the way. 
individual moments of joy and sorrow become shared moments of comfort and celebration. We travel this road together. We share this journey across differences of belief and opinion because we value diversity and because we care for one another. We travel this road together. Today, as we take the next steps, let us notice our fellow travelers, the burdens that they carry, the songs that inspire their hearts. We travel this road together. As we gather in beloved community, let us open the holy havens of our hearts let us share the sacred places of our souls. For we are pilgrims who share a common path. We travel this road together. We tender this flame, opening the book, turning to a page yet to be written, opening a story yet to be told, May we fill this fresh page wisely. May we write a new story into being. May we together inscribe the page with hope. Good morning. Today we're talking about becoming and being and about those things in our lives that help us to become the unique and special souls that we all are. One of those things is people who show us unconditional love and acceptance, like the mothers who are being celebrated on this Mother's Day. The story I have for you today is about one mother who found a way to show each of her children that she loved and valued them each in their own special way. It is called, I Love You the Purplest. Early in the evening, the brothers and their mama finished supper in the sturdy red cabin and set out to fish. The lake slowed its thrashing to a soft, even beat. The mosquitoes dipped low to the water and the water bugs skittered on top. The moon glowed on one side of the lake while the sun shimmered on the other. This was the time when fishing was best. Max exploded from the cabin, twirling the shovel in front of him. Mama came next and then Julian. Julian shut the cabin door tightly to keep it safe from burglars and bears. Julian scooped the dirt to find the fattest worms. Max jumped on the shovel and flung dirt in the air until a tangle of worms filled his can. Mama, who has the most worms, he asked. Mama smiled. Max, your can is full of the liveliest worms. And Julian, your can has the juiciest. Max, Julian, and Mama stepped into the small wooden boat. Julian took one oar and Max took the other. Julian planted his blue boots wide and took deep, even strokes. Max braced his red boots against the ribs of the boat and stroked quickly through the water. The brothers' faces were hot and they gulped at the air. Julian gasped, Mama, who's the best rower? Mama's eyes grew soft. Why, Julian, you took the deepest strokes, and Max, your strokes were the fastest. Then the three fished until stars sprinkled in the sky and the water turned dark as night. In the end, Mama caught one fish, Julian caught one fish, and Max caught three. I'm the best fisherman, cried Max hoisting his fish in the air. Julian pushed his hat brim low on his face. Three fish, what a bountiful fisherman you are, said Mama. And Julian, you're the cleverest. Your fish hid in the weeds, but you waited. 
When your bobber jerked in the water, you kept your pole high and you reeled in a fine fat fish. When the fishing and the baths and the stories were done, Mama tucked the brothers into bed. Julian slept in the top bunk and she reached up to kiss him goodnight. Mama, whispered Julian, his hands forming a tunnel around her ear. Who do you love best? Mama thought for a minute and then she whispered, why Julian, I love you the bluest. I love you the color of a dragonfly at the tip of its wing. I love you the color of a cave in its deepest, darkest, hidden part, where grizzly bears and bats curl up until night. The mist of a mountain, the splash of a waterfall, the hush of a whisper. The breath in Julian's chest grew and grew and grew until he couldn't hold it any longer. Then it came out in a long, velvety sigh. Mama crouched low to the bunk where Max slept. Max wriggled his finger for Mama to come close. He whispered, Mama, who do you love best? Why, Max, I love you the reddest. I love you the color of the sky before it blazes in tonight. I love you the color of a leopard's eyes when it prowls through the jungle and the color of a campfire at the edge of the flame. A wide open hug the swirl of a magic cape, the thunder of a shout. The smile on Max's face grew and grew until his cheeks couldn't hold it in. Then it came out in a big thunderous laugh. Later in the evening, the brothers and their mama slept, one in the top bunk, glowing like the evening moon, one in the bottom bunk, shimmering like the evening sun, and mama in the big bed, dreaming of the boys she loved best. Together, she loved her boys, the purplest, each in their own way. Now, whether we're mothers or fathers, kids or grown-ups, we can do the same thing for all the people in our own lives. We can show them our love, accept them as they are, nurture their strengths, and help their souls grow into being all they were meant to be. So be it. And happy Mother's Day. Spirit of life and love. In the silence, in the stillness, we hear the call of our own heart. In tender dreams, its sorrows and its triumphs. In the silence, in the stillness, we hear whispers of days gone by, of dreams still becoming, of promises for the future. We celebrate together our individual journeys and dreams and our collective ones, knowing the journey is so much richer with others to share in it. In the name of all that is holy, let us be present to the joys and sorrows of this moment. As in every worship, we share those joys and sorrows, names and milestones that are among us and that you would ask to be included in this worship time. For this week, I invite you to reach out to members, friends, uh, neighbors, or others in your life. Extend our circle of care by checking in with the people around you and with the people around all of us. Give the gift of listening to the people you encounter, whether in person or online, and in any of the ways in which we connect in this age. Listen with love and practice the gift of everyday compassion. In our larger Unitarian Universalist world, uh, this week marks the 60th anniversary of the consolidation that created the Unitarian Universalist Association. On May 12th, we celebrate the official moment when the American Unitarian Association and the Universalist Church of America started this new venture and inaugurated this new distinct body of Unitarian Universalism. So much has happened in these past 60 years, and there is so much in bud for the decades to come. Let us rejoice in the gift of 
that we have received from all those who created, uh, who imagined this consolidation, created this opportunity for kind of a new faith, and for all that may come after, for all that may receive um, the gifts of our effort and our care going forward. Let us hold one more moment in silence, recognizing that we have a myriad of concerns in our hearts, that we also have good news that makes our lives sing. There is so much within us and around us. Let us share one more moment of quiet together. Blessed be. Our meditation today comes from the Reverend Lisa Bovi Kemper and is a reflection as part of Mother's Day. In religious community, we share our joys, our triumphs, our sorrows, and our broken places. In the circle of care, we make space for the complexity of life the myriad experiences that bless and break our hearts. The truth of human experience dictates that on any given day, each come to the table with hearts in different places. It is especially so on this day, invented to honor women who nurture. In this circle of care, we honor the truth of what mothering is not and never will be qualified in one single descriptor. Mothering can be elusive or infuriating, fulfilling or confusing, commonplace or triumphant. It exists in the everyday experiences of each person. There is no human being that is not connected or disconnected from a mother. And so we honor the complexity of the experience, writ large with flowered platitudes, but here in this space, laid bare, honoring the truth in each of our hearts, there is room for all in this circle. If you have carried a child or children, whether or not they, come, they came to be born, we see you. If you have fervently wished to do so, and the circumstances of fate made it impossible, we see you. If you love children, we cannot see whether because of death or estrangement, we see you. If you never wanted to be a mother, we see you. If you are happy to mother other people's children as an educator, an auntie, a foster parent, we see you. If your mother hurt you physically or emotionally for both, we see you. If you had no mother at all, we see you too. If your mother is or was your best friend, we see you. If your gender says you are not a mother and yet you take on the role of nurturer, we see you. If you wonder whether your mothering has been enough, we see you. And if yours is a different truth altogether from any that has been already named, we honor your unspoken story. There is room for all in this circle. May it be so today and always. So may it be. This reading and reflection are from the Reverend Mariella Perez Simon. This segment is part of a worship created by the Unitarian Universalist Association called Loved Into Being. Uh, in this section, Reverend Mariella quotes Bernard Loomer, a process theologian. There's also a brief mention of a story about Madame Modifus. Uh, Madame Modifus is the alter ego of a child who finds her voice after a great struggle and finds people who love her in the process. Mostly, I want to make sure we offer this reflection about Bernard Loomer and what that might mean for us. 
I invite you to listen to Reverend Mariella and her reflection. I would like to begin by acknowledging that I live in the traditional land of the people of the three fires. I am deeply honored and grateful to the land itself and to the people who have taken care of it for generations. And today I bring to you a quote from the process theologian Bernard Loomer, who says, by size, by size, I mean the stature of a person's soul. I mean the range and depth of your love, your capacity for relationships. I mean the volume of life you can take into your own being and still maintain your integrity and individuality. The intensity and variety of outlook you can entertain in the unity of your being without feeling defensive or insecure. I mean the strength of your spirit to encourage others to become freer in the development of their diversity and their uniqueness. I mean the power to sustain more complex and enriching tensions. I mean the magnanimity of concern to provide conditions that enable others to increase in stature." End of quote. Of the hundreds of books I had to read for seminary, of the thousands of passages that I read and highlighted and marked, this one has stayed in me, with me the most. From the moment I read that quote, I was like, that is it, that is it. Because since I came from Cuba in 1995, I have been in many liberal religious circles and we had been having in those circles this amazing conversation about what was out there, amazing conversations about the meaning of life, but no one was talking about what goes on in here at the core of our being. No one was talking about our humanity and the struggles that come with being human, as well as the delights. This quote, this quote was talking about these tensions inside of us, the expansion, the volume, the range, the depth, the complexities of our humanity. Shall I read that quote again? Let's read it again. Here it is, by size, I mean the stature of a person's soul, the range and depth of your love, your capacity for relationships. I mean the volume of life you can take into your own being and still maintain your integrity and individuality. The intensity and variety of outlook you can entertain in the unity of your own being without feeling defensive or insecure. I mean the strength of your spirit to encourage others to become freer in the development of their diversity and their uniqueness. I mean the power to sustain more complex and enriching tensions. I mean the magnanimity of concern to provide conditions that enable others to increase in stature. Here's another reason why I love that quote so much, why it resonated with me so much. It's particularly this line, I mean the strength of your spirit to encourage others to become freer in the development of their diversity and uniqueness. I was like, what if that is the future of liberal religion? What if this is where we have failed by not encouraging others to become freer in the development of their own diversity and their uniqueness. The story of Madame Modifus is a story that is painfully familiar to me. Someone who came from another country, from another culture, and having to tone it down in order to fit in. Because my whole self was not, is not, welcomed in some places. And what I know about the human soul is that it goes into hiding. It goes into hiding when we can be our full selves, our whole self. And that breaks my heart every single day, seeing what oppression and repression does to the human soul, to our core, to what is most authentic, most unique, most precious about us. What having to repress 
our life force does to our psyches. I know, I know. And so this quote is asking us to grow the size of our soul, to expand, to open up and let in more perspectives and more languages and more cultures and more colors, more diverse wisdom. And to wrestle, to wrestle with how that contradicts our own worldview. It is asking us not just to allow others their uniqueness, but to invest in the growth of others. That's my second favorite line. I mean the magnanimity of concern to provide conditions that enable others to increase in stature. And that is love, beloveds. That is love. That is love. That investment in creating the right conditions for all of us to grow and flourish. And you know what Zora Neale Hurston said about that, right? She said, love, make your soul crawl out from its hiding place. Love, make your soul crawl out from its hiding place. May we create more loving conditions. May we invest in love. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. Anashe. Times over the course of the year, I've spoken about the power of naming. The act of naming is when a person or a community identifies a person, a place, or a thing, to be sure. Naming also includes identifying an experience, an emotion, a history, and a future. Naming recognizes what is going on inside us and around us. This ability to name is one of our human superpowers, I believe, 
that we are describing and shaping and owning our reality. You know, this is me. This is my experience. This is ours. And this is our world. This month's theme is story. And when a few names come together, then we create story. A narrative emerges. And that, too, further creates and shapes the world. Uh, there's a very woven quality to this as well. Every part of the web of stories and names in our world picks up on other parts all the way back in time and space and preparing the way moving forward to all that will come. All that interconnected naming and story goes all the way down and all the way back out and onward. And in this network, in this network that we share and create all the time, in any moment of our lives, we discover how we perceive the name in you and the name in me. The story in you and the story in me. And we find the story of our lives together because we are on this earth, so inescapably so. The finding and living, the finding and living is our ongoing human work through the ages. I love this engagement between naming and story because it makes room for the old, space for the new, and prepares the way for what yet shall be. In liberal religion, we take up this effort of naming and story for the sake of our collective and individual freedoms. We do this work out of a spirit of love because we know how deeply and thoroughly we are connected and we know how difficult it is to be human merely being. I come to this topic of kind of naming and liberation uh, because of trying to get a handle on Mother's Day. Um, that the aspect of it that is consumerist, romanticized, flowery messages that dominate Mother's Day, it undermines the depth of love and care, the profound strength and the beauty that comes when one person cares so intimately for another. The commercialization, uh, you know, the impact also is on its, the original call for peace. Uh, that call for peace becomes lost in the shouting of sentiment. And a greeting card celebration does not allow for complexity, for the problems, for the failures, for the hurt that can last a lifetime and for generations. And as we heard in the circle of care meditation, there is so much more. How very often what should have been love and care and simply regard does not happen or is lost in those who should have been nurturing. So what is at the core? of such holidays as Mother's Day or Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, Siblings' Day, all of those. What's the desired outcome from naming all of those relations and trying to give those special moments? I want to pause and say how much I see you for those those for whom these days are reminders of pain and grief and rage and abuse, of rejection. Because sometimes we're able to go on and create new families and new meaning. And sometimes, many times, we find ourselves terribly, deeply alone. And sometimes we are in between longing for connection, but often unable to cross the gulf between ourselves and our fellow beings because of the relationships that had happened in the past. 
or that are ongoing and still difficult. For me, these holidays, uh, during these times, I kind of take up the question of complexity and how to encourage, how take them up as a question of how to encourage each other to care and to hope. These days, as a reminder uh, of creating more space, of creating less violence, of focusing on liberation, of the freedom of our collective and individual spirits, how to be expanding the whole human self. I take up the question of our collective development. So at the heart of such holidays, I reframe them and take them as a call to how we can return to be with one another, knowing how difficult it is to be human. Wherever we come from in our relation to our relations, let this moment be a time and place to be with other also wounded humans. Our own experiences are ours, each our own. But being here, may that be a reminder of how we are all part of a network that is life. And together, we bring our collective our respective stories and our names, we get a chance to sort out that naming and that story of how we shall live in all of this complexity. Our theologians are one of those bodies of people that keep calling us also to complexity and wonder. Uh, for today, I want to just focus on one, uh, Bernard Loomer the author of our centering reading and the inspiration for the reflection from Reverend Mariella Perez Simons. Now, Bernard Loomer had a career in religion as a professor in places such as the Divinity School at the University of Chicago and later in Berkeley. He taught and wrote in the 20th century where people were angled with meaning and humanity and theology after World War II. His thought concerned the nature of the universe and God. Uh, for much of his career, he came from a, a liberal Christian uh, tradition. Later in his life, he was part of the Unitarian Universalist community in San Francisco and the surrounding area. In Loomer's understanding, he marveled at a universe that was ever expanding and becoming ever more complex. I mean, he was saying, bring it on. Bring on this complexity. His sense of God was not uh, a transcendent being in any way separate from the world, not this lofty creature above. For him, God always was and is an integrated, integral part of the world. And such a God would also be growing and shifting along with the world. As humans, we are part of this world as well, also becoming more complex, also with the capacity to grow and expand. And let me add, um, I think for Loomer, the word of God, the word God as a name wouldn't have been that um, central. More, He was much more concerned with how naming and language also expands and flows. I'll offer a note, I want to read that centering thought again, but I'll offer a note that when he uses the word size, he always spelled it out in capital letters, S-I-Z-E. He really truly wants us to think in the grand scheme, to keep opening our hearts. So let me read him again. He says, by size, I mean the stature of a person's soul, the range and depth of your love, your capacity for relationships. I mean the volume of life you can take into your being and still maintain your integrity and individuality, the intensity and variety of outlook you can entertain in the unity of your being without feeling defensive or insecure. I mean, 
the strength of your spirit to encourage others to become freer in the development of their diversity and uniqueness. I mean the power to sustain more complex and enriching tensions. I mean the magnanimity of concern to provide conditions that enable others to increase in stature. The essentials of Loomer include expanding the size of one's soul, expanding the capacity, exploring the diversity, all of the richness that is and might be. He says, we are radically interconnected. I think he was the one, I'm understanding, that he was the one that introduced that interconnected web to the Unitarian Universalists uh, that led to our seventh principle, that we affirm and promote uh, the interconnected web of existence, respect for the interconnected web of existence of which we are a part. He was one of those direct voices that helped bring us there. He wanted, called for us to be relational and expansive, ever while being individual and particular and uh, glorious in our, uh, our expressions, our bodies, our souls. And also, Loomer was one of those people that articulated uh, that a power with as opposed to a power over. He was, he was always talking about that we are really with the world, that we are not controlling from the top down. We shouldn't have those relationships because God is not from the top down either. These are some of the core pieces of our, uh, of our theology that have been with us for decades. And they come from Loomer and some of those like him in part. This profound relationalness in dealing with the complexities of our world is what brings so many of us to our religious community, to this congregation, that we may, as individuals, grow in our depth of range of love, but also to maintain our integrity and our individuality. You know, that naming, right, that I started with? We want to make a difference because we are connected. We act out of love and service because we see that and know that connection. It is practice for growing this relational power, this power with, and this willingness to keep practicing in relationship, in the horizontal, is one of the ways that we can survive and thrive whenever no matter what may come, no matter what setback, no matter what disappointment, what betrayal, what harm. Because Loomer was really calling us to the complexity of the world. He was saying, you need to be honest about their sense of the world, all of its hardships, the faults, the terrible things that we do, that are done to us, that we do to the planet. He's not ignoring any of that. He's calling us to be authentic and to witness all that is around us and before us, the range of our abilities, our colors, our beliefs, our shapes, our sizes, because of these, uh, this power with, this relational, this willingness to be expansive, this magnanimity, we recognize the range that is around us. There is no one kind of family no one kind of caregiving. There are so many ways that we are configured. We get a chance to understand and be willing to see real diversity, real difference, to recognize even within the congregation how, how in some ways we live in different worlds, how in so many ways we live in different worlds, and yet we still come together because we are inspired by this connection, this willingness to love, this willingness to be and expand together. 
we have a chance to further move forward in that expansiveness in this year to come as we are always moving into this new day, building a new day, as we talk about in our annual campaign. I invite us to keep moving forward, to bring all that is our authentic selves, all that is around us, all that we are discovering and learning into the creation and recreation of our beloved community. This relational power gets to be freeing because we get to keep exploring and wondering together, even when it is difficult, even when we don't always want to be around each other, even when we don't know how to go forward together. But my liberation is always, as ever, wrapped up with yours. I want to name that and offer that as we keep going forward and building our new story together across the universe in all the ways we can. So may it be. There is more peace somewhere More peace somewhere Till I find it More peace More peace I'm gonna keep on Till I find it There is more peace Somewhere There is more extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Blessed is the path on which you travel. Blessed is the body that carries you upon it. Blessed is your heart that has heard the call. Blessed is the gift you will receive by going. Truly blessed is the gift that you will become on the journey. May we receive all of these gifts each into us. May we go forth in peace. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. <laughs>